Oh. And the good thing is, hook is out. <laughs> oh my out. As soon as he netted, the hook went. No way. Holy Incredible way. minnow, nice sure. Nice. Incredible nice minnow, man. Oh, I hit you going. Here, I'll Keep going. Me. Bring this back oh, shit, down. Yeah. 18. Holy. Look how fat it is. Look at it. Yeah, get that. There he is. 18. Nice fly. 18 inch speck. <laughs> I think this is a pretty decent coaster brookie. I think. It's looking like it. Once again, the incredible silver minnow does it. Let's get this guy released. As you can see, the Lake Run Brook Trout, affectionately known as Coaster Brookies, are pushovers when it comes to the incredible silver minnow. Steelhead also think it's a tasty morsel. We've also caught Chinook and Pink Salmon, Walleye, and Smallmouth Bass on this versatile pattern. The version I use is a variation on the original that John Ritchie, the owner of the local fly shop in London, Ontario, came up with. Just so you know, this video is not me plodding through an entire tying session. It's more of a show and tell of the incredible silver minnow for the interest and entertainment of fellow fly tying enthusiasts. So, let's get to it. Use any long shanked hook. I'm using Mustad 9671 in a number two which is a, an old Mustad number, but I'm sure if you told your local shop that's what you're looking for, they'd give you the updated number. It's just a long shank streamer hook. Uh, it's got a nice gap on it, and it's a down eye hook. I have tied these also on salmon hooks, which have an upturned eye, and it didn't seem to make much of a difference to the fish. So Anyhow, that's the hook. First of all, you want to tie on the, the tail which is mallard flank. Same thing as the top of the wing, which kind of look like that. Generally come loose in a package, looking like that. So you get a whole whack of them in a package. So you get all different kinds of sizes when you get a package like that. The larger ones that you use for the, the top of the wing, but then there's the uh, small ones you use for the tail. So you can pull a bunch of fibers off and tie them in just like you normally would a tail. And then the next thing you do is you wind on a whole bunch of lead wire from about here to probably about a third of the way down the hook shank. On a size 29671, I'll usually wind on about 15 turns of the 030 lead wire. And then you start your thread. The thread that you're going to be using is basically gray kind of a silvery gray, but this is uni and it's just called gray. Alternatively, you can, and this is what John does, he uses white thread or whatever thread he's got and he just uses silver paint, like a model paint, and just paints the head. So you wind that on, you do your tail, put your lead wraps on, and then the next thing you want to put on is the body. Now the original fly which was uh, invented by a guy out of Detroit, Al Girado. The original body was, was all built up with floss, so you get a nice thick body. And then he put embossed silver tinsel, wound that on top, which is a lot of work. So what John started using and what I use most of the time is what's called metallic braid. Comes on a cotton core, like that. You just basically cut it to length and then you take a pair of tweezers or something and you pull that core out and the core is just made up of a whole bunch of strings. So you just pull that out and you've got a tubular piece of very fishy looking tubing. This one is made out of a metallic tinsel, but you can also get it in mylar. Mylar doesn't seem to last as long.
So once you got the body wound on, then you're ready to do the wing. The original under wing was a little bit of white bucktail, and then on top of that, he put blue dyed impala hair. <laughs> You can you can get it, but these days what I use is calf tail. You've probably seen calf tail before. I'll use white. Sometimes if you're tying bigger ones, you might have to go to a bucktail, but that's plenty long enough. You just want to use a little bit, maybe that much at the most. So that's tied on first. And then I also use for the blue, instead of impella hair, I use calf tail and it's kind of a weird looking blue if you can find baby blue that would be the best closest I could get was this and it's kind of a baby aqua which once you get it sparse enough I don't think it really matters too much again you don't want to use much just that much and you can see the the effect it gives under this mallard wing they kind of marry together and then on top of all of that you get yourself a nice long gray mallard flank feather like that this one's all warped, you can see. Try and find one that's nice and flat, because it's just going to be a lot easier to work with. And you take off all the fluffy ones, tear them off, and then you lay it on top, tie it down. Only tie it here, don't tie it anywhere else. And then, once you've done that, under here is a red throat. And the original called for a crimson rooster feather, which I still use. But in a pinch, you can use yarn. I don't think I had the red feathers when I was up. But I did have this red antron yarn, which is really neat because it's kind of sparkly. So that's what I used instead. Tie that in as a throat and then build the head up. And then again, the original called for a painted eye and it was black with a white pupil. The one that John uses is black with a yellow pupil. And he paints the yellow pupil quite large so it just looks like a black outline around the yellow. I use kind of the opposite just because I, I like using the stick-on eye. And again, they don't seem to mind as long as you got eyeballs on there. And then you cover the whole thing with head cement or a lot of guys are using this now. It's the uh, UV cure stuff. I like to use, I use rod finish because whenever I'm fixing or building a rod, I'll tie up a whole bunch of flies that I need to put a finish on and I'll, I'll use the rod finish because it doesn't, this really smells and I, I don't like using smelly stuff on my, on my flies. Same with head cement. You got to make sure that you let that head cement dry forever so that the smell goes away before you put it in your fly box because it'll contaminate all your other flies. <laughs> That's the whole fly. The great thing about it is with that lead, and that's the key to have the lead on there, is when it swims, it'll, it kind of goes down on a, on a flat rather than going down like a jig. It'll kind of go down on a flat, and what happens is that wing comes up. And as you pull it back up, the wing flattens out. And as it dives back down, or settles back down, the wing goes back up again. So it's it's a pretty amazing looking fly. And if you strip, just strip it really fast, it just, everything just goes like this. And it just looks like a, a minnow going 90. As a bonus, I thought I'd show you a saltwater version I came up with. This one is tied on a stainless steel saltwater hook, sizes up to, and including, 2 odd. You'll notice that a holographic crystal chenille has replaced the braided tubing and makes for improved sparkle. Similar to its freshwater cousin, it seems to attract multiple species that favor bait fish for dinner. So make sure you have a few incredible silver minnows in your box when you're heading out for anything that eats a bait fish. Thanks for watching.